um, excellent video that arrived from uh, Level 1 Text this week, um, delving into the thorny issue of what on earth is happening with the stability of um, 13th and 14th generation Intel processors. Something's going on there. And um, the extent of it is such that there's a note on Epic Games website about using these processors with Fortnite. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the biggest games out there at the moment. There's kind of cautionary notes about using these processors. Level one text basically went into the numbers. They approached developers to see, you know, what are their bug reports saying about 13th and 14th uh, generation core processors. They talked to uh, people running multiplayer services, um, multiplayer servers rather, using um, a variety of different um, hardware configurations and 13th and 14th gen core processors are causing genuine issues that account for a staggering amount of uh, instability and crashes to the point where developers are losing money or projecting to lose money. Right. Alex. Awful. This, what is going on here? I mean, I do have personal experience with this. The very computer I'm using now is still using a Intel baseline um, BIOS update, which was kind of like a sticking patch that went out from various motherboard manufacturers to people with unstable um, 13th and 14th gen cores. I've got a 13900KF in my workstation PC, and I couldn't use Adobe Premiere on it. <laughs> but with any degree of stability, all exports would fail. I put in the baseline uh, BIOS and it just solved the issue, but yeah. it is obviously less performant than it was before. But I'm interested in your take on uh, on this. I'd say it's an excellent piece of journalism. It's a great piece of journalism, and I'm very happy someone went in and got the numbers. And uh, specifically, I think the the server uh, providers, multiplayer service provider one, is the most interesting because those thing those systems are not going to be tuned for um, maximum peak power performance it's like yeah. it is actually tuned like lower memory uh speeds it's about stability um and that if they're failing there too i and i honestly think the fact that a number of people that post online uh i've read anecdotal user reports yes excuse me for that but people who download their new profile the new base profile but still have crashing issues and I'm really starting to think this is actually a, like a larger hardware issue, not just um, interfacing with motherboard, like the interfacing motherboard pushing the chip too far. Yes, this probably plays into it to a certain degree, but I think it's at this point in time pointing towards something even deeper and more sinister <laughs> about the, the hardware in 13th and 14th gen. Um I, I, I <laughs> Sinister. Yeah, I mean, well, it's almost sinister in the aspect of, you know, surely this large corporation would want well, to do something about this and you know they would maybe know about it and they sell it i don't know there's been deathly silence basically yeah. we had we had the intel baseline profile roll out to um motherboard manufacturers and then you know a week or so after that intel said whoa hold on a minute don't use that it's not you know we haven't really found a root cause yet yeah. And um, so what is the root cause? I find it really hard to believe that it's taken like so many months now. Was it six months since these stability issues started to emerge that, that nobody knows what's going on? And it's just creating this huge void of mystery and, and theory crafting about what, what it could possibly be when Intel itself must surely have a much deeper knowledge of its own processes and have some idea of some sort of debugging uh, process to figure out what it is that's actually causing it. They they probably 100% do. And I think, um, I don't mean, okay, just this is my own personal thought here. This is There's no basis in reality for this. But I mean, if you don't want to be made <laughs> liable that. for something, it's probably not a good idea to report on yourself to like incriminate yourself usually um, <laughs> about something. So uh, you're saying they can't fix it? That's, that's I mean, theory. well, I, I think the baseline profile and the fact that people still have crashing and the servers are crashing and I mean, there's only, like what, like, and it affects a certain bunch of hardware. I think it's 1300K, 1400K, as well as some 14, like 7 series, right, mm. is also minorly affected. And they there's a handful of crashes also for the 600K series of, uh, I think, 
uh, as well there too as part of the statistics where they're over representative in crashes for things like um, driver uh, DLLs, uh, NVIDIA driver DLLs, and NVIDIA is also pointing at Intel. Um, you know, Rad Game Tools is pointing at Intel. Epic is pointing at Intel. Warframe devs specifically point out that Intel is overrepresentative in their crashing statistics. Uh, and I think it's just like a huge productivity drain. And it's huge. If I were a user and I just had constant crashing due to something that I had no idea what it was, I would immediately want to return this thing to manufacturer if it was within warranty. Um, I don't know how much that applies, but if it is literally something that is in the hardware at this point, it means like, I think, kind of like the um, GTX 970 situation. Like it means either people need compensation or return to manufacture because it's it's been going on for so long now, and the fact that you've been affected, Rich, I think says a lot too. Like it's not it's like everything. Well, it, yeah, I mean, it did degrade. It was fine for like six months, right? You know, yeah, and then and then suddenly the instability started, and you know, it did reach the point where to get a stable system before the baseline BIOS came out, I, you know, I had to cap the overall wattage at 150 watts to get an export working from Adobe Premiere. And it does seem to be the case that um, that's pretty much what the BIOS fix does. <laughs> so it's, it's basically a kind of, um, how can I describe it? A, a massive sticking plaster over what might be quite a small wound. You just don't know. It's just the impact of it is pretty devastating. Right. And certainly, you know, the reason I actually went uh, for the 13900K over the 7950X from AMD is that, you know, the benchmarks were saying, the Intel chip is actually faster for Premiere and productivity tasks like that. So that's why I went for it. In retrospect, maybe I should have just got the 7950X. I had the 5950X before that, and it was a champion. You still use that. And I still use it, and I'm way happier with its stability (laughs) than I would be if I was in your situation. Uh, But, you know, AMD had its own issues at, uh, you know, to begin with. There was the the sort of burning motherboard situation, (laughs) which seemed to be a motherboard issue and some sort of miscommunication between AMD and the likes of Asus about, you know, the power limits that should be going through the board. Right. But, you know, that was, to the best of my knowledge, resolved. Mm-hmm. This is kind of just sort of hanging in the air and it's it's not great. Obviously, Arrow Lake is coming soon, the, the new Intel architecture. But, you know, there's a, it's a hell of a lot of 13th and 14th generation chips out there. And there needs to be some sort of way to address it. Otherwise, it's going to end up in a class action lawsuit. Yeah, there's the specter, the shadow of this issue over the next generation. Because if this issue affected, I mean, they're very similar processors in the end, 13 series and 14 series. Yeah. But the evolution of that is also in the next, you know in the next release too they are building upon themselves and if it is a hardware issue on some level i could expect it to also show up in the next release of processors from intel um possibly you just don't know i mean it is a complete on the one hand it is a completely new architecture on the other hand um it, these things take years to develop right you know final silicon or close to final silicon would have been available a long long time ago so you know does it have similar characteristics that would result in similar instabilities we just don't know do we but i would imagine that intel would before launch um so maybe there will be some sort of mitigation in place if it is there or maybe it's not there at all we just don't know at the moment but john i'm I'm curious what you think about this you've got the 12900k which yeah. seems to be completely immune to this phenomenon yeah, I am extremely relieved by that because, uh, yeah, this this system has been extremely stable for me versus the last one I had, which uh, which one was that? What was the seventy eight? You you had the um the <laughs> you had the Skylake X. The, yeah, the massive, was it like eighteen? I gave you that eighteen core yeah, the, processor. It was the eighteen Cascade core lake. Yes, that one. Oh my god, uh, that that CPU was okay, but it ran super hot. Yeah. And the motherboard I had at the time was pretty unstable. So I used to get a lot of blue screens and all kinds of, I, I was very irritated by that, which sounds similar to what you're experiencing now. But this 12900K with this MSI board has been very rock solid for me, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Like basically no crashing issues at all. And it sounds like I basically dodged a bullet by getting this before the 13 and 14 because traditionally I do tend to go Intel and I probably would have stumbled into a 13 or 14th gen CPU just doing what I do because Intel's stability 
in my experience has generally been quite good mm -hmm. uh and i've kind of stuck with them over the years for that but this this is this is pretty serious what you guys are saying about this problem mm -hmm. yeah um and it really makes me question like what they can do about this because it does seem like a potentially potential a hardware flaw that could possibly not be fixed right and so if you're rocking one of these cpus you basically have to downclock your performance so to speak you know you, you re you're reducing your performance when you shouldn't have to do that of these cpus in order to get it a stable system and that yeah i think is unacceptable at these prices it's just not okay uh, well you know it's it's the reports that alex highlighted about the fact that systems running on baseline configurations are also having issues that's oh. that's that's actually quite yeah. terrifying well that's because... even worse then because then, then it's like what can you do here I, yeah could this is this to me this almost sounds like kind of an an equivalent to the red ring of death for xbox where it's like there's potentially like a serious problem here with these cpus that intel would need to fix and fixing it would mean replacements right yeah, but which is the cost of that would be staggering it would be i mean i don't know how they could weather that i mean they're not a poor company by any stretch until but that would be so much money but mm. i feel like to some degree if it's really turning out to be as bad as it seems like they almost i would I would want them to try to make good on it if they could or do something unless they can figure out some other solution. But this, this seems pretty bad from mm -hmm. the outside. And I'm really curious to see what effect this has on fifth, 15th gen processors, because like you say, there's such a long lead up time to these. Like, well, they, they, there's no longer a 15th gen. It's a core ultra. Yeah. The new re, name is oh, a, so, it's a rebrand. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm still not super happy about that, but we'll leave that. That's right. Is. That's right. The change. <laughs> It's I think if they were going to do a rebrand, re they should have just dumped Core as a concept and just done something different because... Yeah, you know, yeah right? It's just kind oh, of I like Core about Ultra with dumb. some sort of, you know, totally nondescript numbering system. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, it's weird. They they went from Pentium to Core, and then for some reason they're sticking with Core, even though... They should have brought Pentium back. I mean, Pentium was... I thought I thought genius. <laughs> I love that. That's a great one. It's a great no name. It's yeah. a great name, man. Sorry, but yeah. I mean, for now, I'm sticking with this 12900K. I don't really have any real reason to update it yet. But when the time comes to update it for you know better CPU performance, I mean, we'll see where they're at with this new Core Ultra stuff. Whether it's worth going to, or if I actually, I have not had an AMD CPU as my primary machine for. K6. 20 some 25 years right i think you really should be seriously considering it john i was you know you're <laughs> i know it. One, this, this is the first time criticism. i'm actually considering considering it <laughs> your number one criticism and i think it applies to this processor as well is that uh that you've got the 12900k is that it gets extremely hot and uses a lot of power and yeah and you know the efficiency of amd is just on another level and has been for quite some i know time. exactly mm -hmm. i mean it really seems uh, like the current generation of amd stuff is awesome yeah i mean you get that you get the the, the pcie lanes is which is something that i always right. talk about because i mean for john for you too you have a lot of stuff in your pc i have a lot of cards in there yeah the only other yeah. thing that i have ever had issues with amd is i still have um not the best stability with my memory on the 7800X3D setup, right. that might be a motherboard thing. Um, but the original thing that I had with the AM4 board was there was a persistent across a lot of uh, AM4 boards was USB issues dropping out of USB. Oh no. And that was the thing, but it's gone. It was updated. Oh, thank God. It was updated okay. and it's completely gone. I've got so, so many USB devices. Yeah. <laughs> in the future, I would totally recommend you to go over to AMD, at least, especially for workstation stuff. It's like way better. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. we'll see. I'll probably upgrade in the next year or so, Ish, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I think we need to move from Intel here because, yeah. you know, while this is unresolved and it's actually quite interesting that this report came now because, you know, the issue had kind of faded from the limelight and, it, you know, it hadn't gone away. It was still <laughs> no. there. You know, it's just it wasn't getting the attention it deserved. And now it is. I think the pressure is mounting on Intel.